In Creole Parametric, a planar mechanism connection allows two translational degrees of freedom and one rotational degree of freedom. To be honest, I don't use the planar connection that much because most real world mechanisms are primarily along translation and rotation. But let's take a look at how to use it in Creole Parametric. Here I have my M1 Abrams tank assembly, and I'm going to place it into a simulated battlefield. Let's change our windows. And here we have an extrude feature. It's a non-solid feature in the assembly. And I'm going to place the tank on here with that planar connection. Let's click on the assemble button. And then let me go to in session. Here's my tank. And let's just drop it right about over here. To change to a planar connection, first I'm going to open up the placement tab. You go to the user defined dropdown list, and then you can choose planar. And for the planar connection, you're going to pick two planar surfaces, one in the assembly, one in your component. So I will select what I'm using to simulate the ground. And let me open this up in its own separate window. It might be a little easier for me to manipulate in there. I'm just going to pick the flat surface from one of the tank treads. And now we have it placed in the model we can adjust its location. Let me translate it. And as you can see here with the available degrees of freedom, you have two translational and one rotational degree of freedom. And I'm going to set it up right about so. At this point, I could hit the check mark and the component would be placed. I'm going to also set up some different references just so that every time I regenerate the model, it's going to go over to this end and be facing forward. So let's start with translation axis one. You're going to pick two references between the component and the assembly. I'm going to use some datum planes. For the first reference, let me use this plane, this assembly plane. And I'll grab a corresponding plane from my part. And let's start off with putting it, I don't know, negative 2400. That's good, so I'll start there. For my second reference, I will select assembly front and this assembly right from the component. Let's change that to zero. That'll end up putting it right in the middle of that surface. And finally, for the rotation, I'll also use those same references. Let's use assembly front and this one over here. Right now, it's at an angle of like half a degree. Let's change that to zero. And oh yeah, I want to enable these as the regeneration value. So let me check those different boxes inside of here. I just like that in this particular simple example, just so that when it... When I hit the regenerate, the component will return to this location. To be honest, if I was using this in a higher level assembly, I usually don't enable the regeneration values because I have had difficulties just keeping track of where I have regeneration values and where I don't. You can go to your mechanism settings to disable all regeneration values in the assembly. So that is good for placing it. It says my connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark and I'll turn off my datum plane display. So there you can see my tank on the battlefield. Let's have it move along here. So to create a motor, I will go to applications and then mechanism. And now if I go to my motors, there's already one motor in here that came over from the assembly. You can see that little indication over here. Let's create a second motor. So I can right click on motors and hit the new icon. And for my references, I'm going to use this axis from the connection. And unfortunately, this axis is going to end up needing a negative value. So let's use for the driven quantity, I'm going to do a velocity and let's use a velocity of minus 200 inches per second and then hit the check mark. So now I've got my new motor created. Uh, let's go to create a brand new analysis. And this one, I like to use kinematic analyses. Position analyses are the old Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier solver. 
I like the true kinematic solver. And let's see, let's have this run for, let's do 24 seconds. If I go to the motors tab, I can make sure that I have both of my motors running. So again, here's the one that'll traverse the turret that's coming over from the tank assembly model. And here's the one that I just created. Anything else in here? Ah, let's do a little higher frame rate. And everything looks good. I did not set up a snapshot for the initial position, but my regeneration values will take care of that. And so let's hit the run button and there we can see it moving along there I will click the OK button to complete out of here and then if I want to take a look at the playbacks I can expand the playback and then right click on it and then use the play icon and let's crank up the speed then hit the play button and there you can see my turret is traversing as the tank is moving forward. And right now, again, it's just moving in a straight line. In another video, I'll show you how you can get some more complex motion for this planar connection. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.